Right, I have another very interesting tool to show you this evening which I've adapted for use on the lathe and it's a vintage tool um, from the past. It's called a Mason Master Safety Speeder. And it was used to slow the old style electric drills that didn't have variable speed. Um, four to one um, reduction on the gearbox and um, they used them for drilling into masonry at a slow speed and high torque um, to make it safe drilling. Now there's several different versions of this tool. Um, there's a full metal housing one, very nice quality tool there, but this one doesn't come apart, it's a sealed unit. Um, this one here has like a plastic outer shell and metal insides and this one here is a larger um, deluxe version it's got a 3 to 1 reduction and a 9 to 1 reduction gearbox um, whether you hold the front or the back and I've taken one of the um, plastic housing ones apart to show you the components inside how well it's made and how it works um, under this plate here at the back there's a nice ball race which supports the spindle and makes it run smooth um, and like I said this is called planetary gearing or epicyclic gearing um, the one in the center there gear in the center is called the sun gear and these are the planet gears which revolve around the sun and the gearing on the outside here is called the ring gear or the annular gear so it's a very well made unit and um, good quality so in use this was obviously put into the drill chuck and then the mason bit goes in this chuck here start the electric drill up and then grip this with the thumb and finger and that starts the um, chuck up at a slow speed high torque and you can drill into the masonry now if the mason drill got stuck all you would have to do is let go of the outer ring here and this chuck would actually stop turning and that's why they call it a safety speeder Now if you saw my video on making a power feed adapter for the compound turning on the lathe um, you'll see in there that I used a um, cordless screwdriver to do the compound turning um, I found that this screwdriver was still too fast for the Myford ML7 to produce a really nice finish it was okay on the mini lathe because that's got much faster spindle speeds but the ML7 has only got about um, 850 rpm on the top speed so I originally bought one of these to slow this down and it did work for that but at the end of the video you'll see one of the best uses for this tool um, better than the actual original use for it so on this particular D speeder I've modified it I've sawn off the end of one of these tools here and um, drilled it to fit the um, spindle on the back of the D-speeder and secured it on there with Loctite 638 and um, that's so I can actually use my cordless screwdriver on there like that and then I've made a PVC adapter for the compound slide and threaded it to fit on this one this one's half inch UNF some of them are 3 8 UNF so that one screws on the front of the D-speeder like that and it's actually ready to use on the lathe now you may ask why I don't use a variable um, speed drill on this one um, it's because I like the set speed of a cordless screwdriver I find if I use my variable speed drill it's very hard to um, just grip it and get a steady speed it's all too easy to pull it in too fast and it goes too fast so the set speed on this one with this uh, D-speeder is the best 
option. So I'll just quickly show you this working on the lathe and then I'll show you the actual best use for this tool. So there you can see a really nice finish on a piece of um, mild steel, um, just the right feed for the MyFed ML7 um, or any other lathe that you haven't got very high speeds. Um, I think this is the best option if you're using a cordless screwdriver. So I originally bought one of these to actually slow the speed on the cordless drill for the MyFed ML7. Um, but then one night I was having to think about it and I thought what else could I use this tool for? So again you can see that this one's been modified. On the original ones the spindle diameter is quite small and quite short. So I've um, drilled a piece of um, tool steel and put a brass bush in there. And I've put that down over the original spindle with Loctite 638. And that's so that it's a nice hold in another chuck. So the idea I came up with is that these D-speeders make fantastic drilling and tapping fixtures for doing machine tapping. And if you use one of these, you'll probably never break a tap again. I've got a core diameter for the 2BA um, tap drilled in there to a certain depth and I'm going to let this tool go down right to the end and you'll see how it works um, so that you don't actually break the tap. So you can bring the tool up like that, touch the face, and nothing will happen until you grip the diameter here. When it hits the end of the hole, you just let go. And that's it threaded to the end. And that's how you do machine tapping to a depth without actually breaking a tap. And you can also use these for fine drilling. Um, same principle, bring it up, touch the face, and then wind the drill in. If you think it's uh, binding at all, whatever, you just let go of this um, outer diameter and it will freely spin. So this brilliant tool will actually save a lot of tool breakages. So I reckon that the use I've shown you here is actually better than what the tool was actually made for. 
So there we have it, a vintage tool from the past, largely forgotten about or consigned to the scrap bin, um, being used again for a different purpose in the machine shop. So it's a great tool to have. You might have one in your toolbox already, but if not, you can pick them up at car boot sales or on eBay or whatever. And I'd actually recommend getting one just for this lovely machine tapping fixture. And since I've modified these tools for use on the lathe, I've been working on another project and it's this high quality dedicated electronic compound drive. It's low revs and very high torque. And when I fully completed it, I hope to show this in another video at a later day. So thanks for watching and see you next time.